Hello and welcome to Projector, and I'm reviewing another film that I saw at the London Film Festival, where Stephen Graham discovers if you can't stand the heat, there's no escape from the kitchen in the single-take drama Boiling Point. Andy Jones, played by Stephen Graham, is a top London chef, but his personal life has become dysfunctional and it is affecting his work at his restaurant. As he arrives at work during a busy night in the weeks leading up to Christmas, his staff, including sous chef Carly, played by Vinette Robinson, are shaken by a poor health health inspection. Determined to try and salvage their reputation, the stress in the kitchen only increases with demanding patrons, infighting, and the arrival of celebrity chef Alistair Skye, played by Jason Fleming, who has brought food critic Sarah Southworth, played by Lourdes Febres, and the pressure begins to push Andy and his staff to their breaking point. Sequences filmed in one continuous take, often affectionately called one-ers, are something that film fans like to drool over, especially considering they're often the trademark of many an established director like Steven Spielberg and Brian Brian De Palma, who show off their technical proficiency with these complicated setups. And suddenly in the last decade or so, we've seen an explosion of these kind of complex camera movements, particularly in the action movie genre, where a common trademark now is to have an action sequence seemingly entirely in one shot, although often it's actually several camera movements stitched together. Much more rare, though, is the movie entirely filmed in one continuous shot, and that used to be because, technically, you couldn't actually do it. One of the earliest examples of this was Alfred Hitchcock's Rope, but the problem they ran into on that movie is that film cameras only carry 10 minutes of footage at a time, so every 10 minutes in that movie, it very conspicuously has to hide a seam line. But it was only when digital video came in was it truly possible to film for the length of an entire feature continuously, with movies like Time Code and Russian Ark being the progenitors of the Mon single take movie. And certainly as digital has become more accepted and widely used, we've seen more filmmakers over the last decade attempting this very delicate tightrope walk, with movies like Victoria and Let's Scare Judy Julie being more modern examples, and Boiling Point is one of those movies. There are no cuts in this movie. What you see is exactly what they got on the day. Now, this is the second feature of Philip Barantini, who previously made his debut in 2020 with the Craig Fairbrass movie Villain, and this was apparently a passion project for him. He previously worked as a chef, so he has a lot of experience working in that environment, and he wanted to try and really recapture that on film. This is also notable as being one of the very last productions to film before COVID shut everything down back in March of 2020. Literally, they were filming in that month, and they actually decided that they were going to cut their schedule in half. Originally, the plan was to do eight takes in four days. Instead, they did four takes in two days. The take that's included in the movie is their third take. And Boiling Point is an absolutely great movie. Sorry to take any suspense out of it, but honestly, this is truly fantastic. Now, when I say the Boiling Point was filmed in one continuous shot, that makes it sound like a gimmick, but it absolutely isn't. It's technique. It serves the story rather than the other way around, and it does a fantastic job of building the tension all throughout the running time. And I think it does this in multiple different ways. The first is subconscious, because when the movie starts, you are acutely aware that you're watching a continuous camera movement, but very quickly you learn to adjust to it and accept it, because you become engrossed in the action. And I think this is a really neat trick that the movie does, is that by not cutting, it actually immerses you into the world of the movie and the kitchen staff that make up the cast of the film. And so I think we've been programmed over years of watching movies to look out for cuts. And that's not to say that you can't build tension through cutting. In fact, a lot of tension is built through the juxtaposition of images. But I also think that cuts can also serve as something of a mental release valve in that they remind you that you're watching a fiction, that you're watching something constructed. And so in that way, you've got to remove from what's going on. Whereas by not cutting and holding on the action, it always feels like 
you're present. And that means that once the movie starts to ramp up, it becomes almost compulsively watchable. You can't tear yourself away from it because you're just fully engaged with it. But it also works psychologically because it makes you one of the kitchen staff. It places you right in the heart of the action. It makes you one of them. This is their job. This is their evening, and this is what they've got to keep track of. Customers, allergies, orders, all of that. If something goes wrong in the kitchen, something goes wrong out the front. So they have to work together as a team, in unison. Everyone has their responsibilities. Everyone has to keep track of each other. That gives you a great sense of the atmosphere and camaraderie in the kitchen, especially because it's continuous, but also it gives you an idea of just how much pressure they're under, because literally they're taking care of other people's health. It isn't just that the food has to be great, they also not have to give them food poisoning or trigger their allergies or anything like that. So in that way, it gives you a real authentic sense of what it's like to work in a kitchen, as you would expect from a movie filmed in an actual restaurant from someone that used to work in that environment. Everything in the movie feels very authentic in that way. And while obviously the scenario is slightly exaggerated for dramatic effect in that it's a perfect storm of problems in that you've got a food critic, a marriage proposal, a customer being racist to one of the wait staff, and arrogant influencers ordering off menu that need to be accommodated, it all feels like things that could happen over the course of any shift, compacted into one absolutely hellish night, and you can feel the stress building throughout. That's what the movie wants you to feel. It wants you to feel overwhelmed in the same way that many of the characters are, because it wants you to understand the mental health struggles of people working in restaurants. And certainly, I think the movie has a very sympathetic view of that environment, and helps you understand why so many people People crack under that kind of pressure, having to deal with all of these different problems and responsibilities all at the same time. And certainly you see several characters that are definitely extremely frayed around the edges. It's also a movie that rewards you for paying attention because if you can keep up with the action, you can definitely see what's going right and what's going wrong. Yes, there is something inherently theatrical about a lot of these continuous take movies because that's what theatre is in a lot of ways. But at the same time, I wouldn't describe this movie as being theatrical because actually I feel like it's very cinematic in the way that it's filmed. And I think top job to Barantini and the rest of his team because they are absolutely phenomenal on a technical level. The way that the camera glides and moves around the restaurant is absolutely brilliant and it's very carefully choreographed there's not a single moment in this movie that feels like it's misframed or doesn't know where it's supposed to be pointing it all feels exactly where it is supposed to be and so it guides the viewer through the action and makes sure that we follow exactly what we need to see at any given moment and that is damn good technical skill. There's always a lot of movement. It never feels static because obviously this is a very busy kitchen. That makes it easier to acclimatize the fact that there are no edits because once you do that, the changes in composition over the course of the shot are what take the place of individual cuts. And so I feel like that's very similar to Spielberg, how he'll stage a scene as a continuous shot and you won't even be aware that he's doing it because there are so many changes in composition over the course of it. And Boiling Point is effectively taking that principle and applying it to feature length. And if the crew are doing this very delicate dance, then so is the cast right alongside them. Much like the characters that they're portraying, they are a team. They are working in unison with each other. And that's emphasized by the fact that very early on, they have to take a big selfie together for Instagram. And the last thing you see at the very end of the credits is that Instagram shot. And I like that. That's a little touching note to end the movie on, but also emphasizes how everyone is working together. Everyone is at the top of their game here, working in unison. And I feel like there's not a bad performance in the bunch. They are 
all great and fantastic. But of course, because you're watching actors working continuously, at least in my mind, I'm thinking about the fact that knowing the way this movie was made, that only adds to the pressure that's going on on screen because obviously I'm thinking about actors flubbing lines or making a mistake or screwing up. Obviously, that's not really going to be in the movie to a noticeable extent because that wouldn't have been the take that they chosen. But even so, that just adds to the escalation of what's going on. The film is a real showcase for Stephen Graham, who is one of the great British character actors working today, having held his own against the likes of Robert De Niro and Al Pacino in The Irishman. Graham reprises his role from the short film that this is expanded from, and it's clear that his Andy is desperately trying to keep his head above water. It's clear from only a few scant lines at the beginning of the movie that his home life has become turbulent, likely as the result of his work and now his personal life is affecting his professional one in that he's not really keeping on top of everything he's not really doing the duties and responsibilities that he's supposed to as the head chef especially when it comes to ordering in food which is causing more tension among certain members of the kitchen staff and adding to the fissures and there are moments where Andy takes his stress out on other members of the staff there are real kind of explosive moments and he later realizes those are completely completely wrong but he just feels so completely swamped with it all that it just comes out in these outbursts and certainly it's a very sweary movie for that reason it's clear that he's really struggling to keep up with it all and the more he tries the further away it gets and he's resorted to things like drugs and alcohol just to try and calm the nerves somewhat and it's still not working and i think the most telling moment is when he goes into the back and he walks into the freezer and he just stops to try and calm himself take a breath and we as audience members feel exactly in the same boat in that moment we feel like that moment is necessary just to give us a moment of respite before walking back out into the pressure cooker but it just goes to show just how completely overwhelmed Andy is and just out of his depth it's clear that he was a star chef in the past and now all of that responsibility and that reputation is starting to weigh down extremely heavily on him and Graham is brilliant in the movie equally as good is Vanette Robinson as Carly the sous chef his right hand who really is the one that is taking on most of his responsibility she's the one that's had to step up to the plate to try and even out the fact that her boss is not really doing all the things that he should be doing and so she's the one that's really taking command of the kitchen and I think there is a strong friendship between them and a respect but also you can tell that she's getting to the end of her rope she is starting to get tired of covering for him and protecting him and there's only so much that she can take of that not helping matters is the fact that the restaurant owner is starting to grate on her nerves. She's especially getting annoyed at the fact the restaurant owner seems more concerned with social media and promoting the restaurant than anything else and accuses her of nepotism. And Carly doesn't feel like she's being truly appreciated. She could be a head chef at her own restaurant if she really wanted to, but it feels like she's sticking around out of an obligation to her friendship with Andy. And she's the one that kind of acts as a mediator in the kitchen when arguing flare up and Robinson is truly great in this movie especially in the moments that she shares with Graham particularly in the film's final moments. I also like Jason Fleming in a key supporting role as a celebrity chef very much in the Gordon Ramsay mold although not 100% based on him in that he's got this hit television show everyone recognizes him from it he's all smiles in public but it's clear this restaurant call has an ulterior motive behind it and him and Andy obviously have some kind of personal beef that they need to work out and Andy has been trying to evade it for a really long time so Fleming chef just shows up completely unannounced bringing an off-duty food critic that he's having an affair with alongside just to 
add to all the stress and pressure. And it's clear that Fleming Chef feels that he needs to confront the issue by just simply showing up like this. And then he's just exerting this kind of suffocating authority onto him, just really kind of adding to the sense that Andy isn't really in control of his kitchen anymore. And he feels like he's been owed something. And that just really makes those interactions that he has with him very uncomfortable. And they try to replicate that in the camera work as well, the way that the camera rotates around their table. And there are moments where Fleming really starts to get very nasty with him and is only broken up by the fact that the influencers on the next table have spotted him and want his picture. I do have a couple of small issues with the film. I do think that there are a couple of story threads that are introduced that don't really go anywhere. The thing that I'm thinking of in that regard is the young dessert chef, who is constantly told to roll his sleeves up, and then it turns out there's a reason he keeps them down. And thematically, that makes a lot of sense, because obviously it goes back to the mental health theme of the movie. The problem is that once that's revealed, the movie never goes back to it. It never really addresses it again. And I feel like that's something of a problem, because honestly, it could have done with a bit more expansion in that area. And I think the revelation hues a little bit closely by itself as being a bit soap opera just being left on that particular note. It's only a small criticism, however. I also think the ending, for me, felt a little bit flat. It felt a little bit too abrupt, but I also understand why the movie needed to end that way. It just feels like a very small, very interior ending Whereas perhaps I would have maybe gone for something a bit more dramatic, but I do think that that's more personal preference than a problem with the script itself. Otherwise, though, this is very strongly directed, and I was totally engrossed in the movie from start to finish. I highly recommend Boiling Point. I think it's a movie that people have slept on to a certain degree because it hasn't had a huge amount of distribution. And sorry to the filmmakers for not reviewing this in a more timely fashion, but I think it's a movie that people should really seek out because it's absolutely well worth it. This is top flight filmmaking. Great cast, great director, great script, great crew all working together to create something that is totally absorbing. You can feel your blood pressure rising as you watch this. It's that nerve jangling and so completely claustrophobic. It's a real masterclass in building tension. If you like good drama, this is an absolutely slap up meal. If you like this review, though, you can give me a tip at my Ko-fi page, or you can sample the full menu at my Patreon, where you can see my reviews early among other perks, including access to my Discord server. But until next time, I'm Matthew Buck, fading out.